Hi, I'm Kubis van Rensburg. Join me now for Capturing Glory. We're gonna go into the Word of God. It's time for the church to come out of the closet and become visible. You are the city, you are set on a hill, you are the light of the world. that came in late, you tuned in by television. This is a debt cancellation meeting and we trust God for supernatural financial blessings on the church of Jesus Christ. And are you there in your house? Okay, there's a book, War on Debt by John Avanzini, written in 1989 or 1990, I think it's a long time ago. I went to his school on finances and it blessed me tremendously in 1985. But there's chapters like God's miraculous solution to your debt problem. Yeah. Stuff like up to your eyeballs in debt. <laughs> this stuff like debt is a very heavy responsibility. There's a chapter on the spirit of debt. It's a spirit, you can tell. I mean, you go in the right place at the right time, you walk out with debt. I mean, there's not a clothing shop in our country that you can walk in now and they don't stop you and say, have you got a card? Do you want a card? What they actually mean is, get a card and you can make debt. That's what they're actually trying to tell you. If you take a card, we can put you in debt. If we put you in debt, we can put you out of business. Right? So it's the spirit in debt. Boy, oh, this is a nice chapter. You cannot borrow your way out of debt. Come to me and bring all your debt to me. And then you owe only me. You bring all your little debts and you pay me. It's very quiet now. I believe it's happening a lot in the city of ours. If I look over the faces and I hear the spirit of silence that crept into the house all of a sudden. You know, now they don't tell you, oh, our interest rate is so low. But at the end, if you count it up, Oh, then you really pay. And at the end of the day, there's only one man that can take your house, and it's him. <laughs> the miracle of canceled debt. Wow. First, there was the widow's debt that was miraculously canceled. Hmm? Jesus had the debt miraculously canceled. The children of Israel had debt miraculously canceled. It's all in the Bible. And then there's other debt cancellations in God's Word. You've got to read the book. I'm not going to preach it, neither read the book. I'm just telling you some of the chapters. The power of debt can be broken. You have a supernatural power to get wealth. Hmm? And then the last chapter said, you must now declare war on debt. There's other chapters, but I think that's it. You must declare war. You must realize, I want to be out of debt. There's a day that I stood in our church. We owed 700,000 rand on our old building. Our old building. We owed 700,000 rand. I walked in there the February month. I said, the 1st of July, we out of debt. And I said, that's not only for our church. That's also for me, myself. That was 1997. I said, we're going to be out of debt. We're not going to owe the bank. So I went to the bank manager and I said to him, by July, we're out of debt. He said, you can't be. You signed a contract for a certain amount of years. And because of that years, we gave you a certain interest rate. And he said, because of the interest rate, we cannot pay it off within that, not with, for, before that time is, is expired. I went to him the 1st of July. I said, I've got the money. Can we cancel the contract? He said... I told you I can't, but because I prayed a lot for him to buy bargains in cars, and he learned from me how to get a bargain, you know, <laughs> he said, uh, I'm sticking my head out, but we're going to cancel that debt. Yeah. I said, oh, 
and my house. Okay? I owed 65,000 rand on my house. And I had a car that I owed 18,000 on. Now that's long ago. That's 1980, 1997. Okay? So uh, I said, I want my house paid too. He said, well, you know, there are ways doing this and doing that. And I went to our family. I said, let's pray. God came through. The money came through. In one week, I paid the house off. But the car, I owed more than what the car was worth. You know the story. Is there anybody that knows the story? The car, you owed more than what it's worth. You want to trade it in? They say, no, you owe more. So I said to the guy, I don't care how much I owe. Just take the car. I don't want debt. He said, then you still have to pay 4,000 rand if I take the car. I said, I'll pay 4,000. And he said, where are you going to get the 4,000? I said, I'm going to be out of debt, so God's going to give us the 4,000. The next day I had 4,000 and I was out of So I, I, I bought a, you know, I'm not telling you, whatever I bought, it was a scrap thing. You know, I had to fix and, and Benny had to help and, you know, and we got the thing going. But at least I had no debt. Two months later, a brand new car with zero kilos on the clock. Not a skimpy, wimpy car. A very expensive German car. Was delivered at my house on my name. Shout it out. I'm going to be debt free. And I'm going to have money for a change. Now, there's that debt cancellation of that woman in 2 Kings 4. He says in chapter 4, verse 1, Now the wife of a son of the prophets cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. So her, her, her husband was one of the sons of the prophets that belonged to Elisha. They might, he must have been serving Elisha. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. Everybody said he feared God. I must write this down on my board. This struck me this morning when I read it. He feared the Lord. Come on, say it. This man feared the Lord. But, have you got an Amplified Bible? But, the creditor has come to take my two sons to be his slaves. Yet, Okay, it's quiet now. This man feared God, yet he had a lot of debt. Hmm? The creditor has come to take my two sons to be his slaves. Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you of sale value in the house? She said, your handmaid has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, go around and borrow vessels for all, from all your neighbors, empty vessels and not a few. And when you come in, shut the door upon you and your sons. Then pour out the oil you have into all those vessels, setting aside each one when it's full. And I just saw this morning, point number one, this man feared God. Point number two, yet he had a lot of debt. Point number three, okay? Ask, what have you? Okay? Then he says, of sale value in the Amplified. Then he said, said, what she had, what you have, pour it out. What you have, pour it out. Number five, but shut your door. Thank you, Chrissy. He's getting it. Okay? Okay. Matthew 6. When you pray, shut your door. Go to your father that sees in secret. And your father which sees in secret will reward you openly. You don't have to tell everybody what you gave. Because it's not faith without hints that's dead. It's faith without works that's dead. When you got your, your harvest, then tell the people what you gave. 
But don't tell everybody what you gave before you got your harvest, expecting the people to give because you're hinting. Oh, you know, I just sold my car. I just sold my car. Bless you. So what, what do you think? I'm God. Must I give you another car? Mm -hmm. Is it funny how people would walk around, especially if, if, if you're the type of preacher that I am, that people know I'm a giver and people know I'm blessed, people would come preachers at the pastor's conference. Quibbers, yesterday I gave all my money in that offering of yours. I said, good. I hope you did it with the right heart. Quibbers, I'm expecting God to do something great in my church, you know. We need 20,000 now. I said, I hope you get it. What you have, close your door. Your father who sees in secret will reward you. Then pour out, pour it out, man. Pour it out, what you have. Man, this is all I have, but I'm going to put it in here tonight knowing I can't live with 20 rand. Yeah. Our children were babies. And there was a conference of preachers of the AFM church here in Clarksdorp, Rebuxontein. Mm -hmm. We had literally 20 rand in the house. 20 rand. And the previous night, Annalise said, you know, this is all the money that's left. I said, give it to me. She said, what are you going to do? I said, uh, uh, I'm going to a conference. I'm going to sew it. She says, you see that, babies? Did you see the fridge? No milk. Did you see the bread tin? No bread. I said, give me the 20 rand. Amen. She said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to sew it. Amen. She took a Bible. And she threw it on the ground. She said, God, you said you're going to supply. And she threw it on the ground. She says, I don't see it. There's my husband going with the last money, and he's going to throw it into a pastor's conference. <laughs> so that morning they were there, and they took up an offering, and it was, it was really poor. I wonder if there was 100 rand in the offering altogether. <laughs> Out of 300 pastors, really, really, so poor man. I, I threw in my 20 rand. And the guy that was supposed to preach stood up and he said, uh, mm, Oh, we got you, Pastor Kubis van Rensburg. He just started a new ministry here in Clarksdorp in a tent. And uh, I want him to pray for us this morning. And I prayed, and the Holy Ghost hit me. I started prophesying over them. I called a few of them out and said, This is your problem. This is this. this. This guy said, hey, people, the meeting this morning is going to be on the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Here we just saw it. Uh, is there a problem if I would ask him to preach in my place this morning? Yeah. Everybody said, no, let him preach. But God gave me a sermon nine days before that and said, you're going to preach this sermon at that place. Hallelujah. I didn't tell anybody. I said, how on earth will they ask me to preach? So here I'm up and I said, I got the message nine days ago when I was in a fast and I want to preach to you. Man, halfway through, the thing broke loose. This pastor stood up and he said, people, I don't know this man. I really only met him today. But I don't know, but God is telling me we must give money to this man. The people ran. It was a suit wearing days. I had a suit on. Brother... They opened the one pocket and they put it full of notes. Then the other pocket. Then the inside pockets. Then they got a checker's bag, a shop right bag. And they filled it up with notes. I came home that day. We had a borrow, remember? We had to pay a borrow at the tent. We didn't have money to pay the borrow. We didn't have money to, for nothing. I came home. I paid the borrow. I paid the house rent. I paid the telephone rent. We went and bought clothes for the children. Man, my wife just said, she picked up the Bible and said, Sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. But I thought of it today. What you have. Shut your door. Pour it out. Hmm? 
Then she came and told the man of God, and he said to her, verse 7, Go sell the oil, man. Pay your debt, and you and your sons, listen to this, live on the rest. There was such a debt cancellation that what was over after she paid the debt looked after her and her sons for the rest of their lives. For the rest of their lives. Hmm? Everybody say, I'm going to be debt free. And I'm going to have enough money. I need to put there a point six. Your father shall reward you. Openly. In other words, people will see that you now have it. Say, I'm going to have it. Okay. So the most of the stories I can tell, I've got witnesses that can testify about how God supplied for us in the days of the tent, etc., etc. Okay. Psalm 20, okay, everybody, if you ever gave an offering to a church, put up your hand. Say, I did. I did. If you ever gave a tithe, say, I did. I did. If you ever blessed anybody with money and you felt you had to do it, say, I did. I did. See, we all did. Hmm? Hmm? We all did. May the Lord... Amplified Bible. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob set you up on high and defend you. Send you help from the sanctuary, that means the Holy of Holies, Holy Angels, and support, refresh, and strengthen you out from Zion. Who is he talking about? Now listen to the rest of this psalm. It's going to knock you in a place of victory. May the Lord, okay? Remember verse 1? May the Lord. Now I just put in may the Lord, verse 3. Remember all your offerings. I'm talking to you. May the Lord remember all your offerings. May the Lord remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Selah. Pause and think of that. Right. Relax. Selah. Think of that. May the Lord send you help from the Holy of Holies. In other words, angels are going to come to your support. May the Lord support you, strengthen you, and refresh you. May the Lord remember all your offerings and sacrifices. In other words, I think this is good, preaching with points. Point seven. Point number seven of my message. (laughs) If God must remember, call it, build a memorial. All right. Can I build a memorial? Listen. Hmm? Can I build a memorial? Go to Acts 10. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Go to Acts 10. Acts chapter 10. Madro shibangle shikara bundo so brava ha cloto she perevito cosa mara bangando la tera. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. A devout man and one that feared God, second time, with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Hmm? And he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, there's help coming from the sanctuary. I hope anybody's with me in the house. And when he looked on him, okay, this man was doing offerings and sacrifices. Now help is coming from the sanctuary. An angel appeared unto him. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? Hmm? And he said unto him, Your prayers and your alms. Amplified Bible, your generous gifts are come up for a memorial 
before God. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Build a memorial with your offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, and your givings, and say it out loud. Lord, I have given, and I'm calling it to remembrance today in Jesus' name. The Lord, may the Lord, we're going on, we're going on. Verse 4, bless you guys, bless you. Mm, this is awesome stuff. Verse 4, may, this is now after this has happened, and we have now sealed, all right? May He grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. My goodness. Somebody need to shout. Huh? Eight. Ha! Huh. What will he do? All your desires. I think this is just too much. All your desires. All your plans. Come on, Amen. come on. I think it's time to say to somebody, bless you all. Say to somebody, uh, I'm taking that. Amen. Come on, bless you guys. Say to somebody, I'm taking that. Turn to 10 people, man. Turn to 12. Say, I take that. Hmm? How many desires have you got? How many plans have you got? God's going to grant it you. Say, God's going to grant me that. God's going to grant me that. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Hmm? Let's read on. Verse 5. Bless you guys. We will shout in triumph at your salvation and victory. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. So we're going to put a banner up that's going to say, my desires, my plans, my petitions. What am I trying to say? Write your plans down. Write your visions down. Write your petitions down. Put it somewhere in your office and say, Lord, there's my banner. Psalm 20 says, I must make a banner and you're going to give it me in Jesus' name. Bless, bless, bless. Make a banner, man. Is that all right? Put it up. Point 10. God's going to grant you your petitions. Have you heard about the petitions people write? Bless you. Okay? People come with petitions. Would you sign this petition, please? We want the mines to stop their striking. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then everybody signed the petitions. Bless you. When last did you make a petition and put it up and say, Lord, this petition, I'm going to sign it three times a day before meals. Thou shalt lose weight. <laughs> Before lunchtime, thou shalt lose weight. That's a good petition for some of you if I look around. Ah, oh, thou shalt lose weight. But if I look in the parking lot, some of you say, thou shalt drive a good car. Thou shalt drive a good car. If I look at the wallets, I'm going to have a Gucci wallet. I'm going to have a tag Hoya wallet. I got one this week. Hmm? Bless you, 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 bless you. Okay, when we talk about this stuff, I mentioned, y'all bless you guys, man. It's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. You got to stay, you got to stay single-minded. I mentioned it. You can't today make these declarations and tomorrow say, ah, no, 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 no. It ain't working for me. You can't change your mind. You got to renew your mind. All right? And then say what God says about your finances. Say, God wants me prosperous. God wants me successful. God says His, His, His blessings makes me rich. And it will add no sorrow to it. In other words, I'm not going to feel bad because I'm rich. You know? You know? Bless you. You know how many times I had a very great car in this ministry? Two months I sell the car, give the money to the church. Have you ever thought why? Because I feel wicked. Look at my car. Look at other people. Who knows? It's not right that I have a CLK 63 AMG. I had one two years ago. 2,000 Ks on the clock and I sold it. Put the money in the church, in the channel. You know why? 
I feel bad. I shouldn't be so blessed. Sold the car, God said, you wicked, why did you sell the car? <laughs> then I really felt bad. I'm going to get the money back and buy the car back. No, 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 no. Okay, next time I'm going to get a better one. So I got another one. Yeah. Two months. Mm, mm. I can't be so rich and other people so poor. So I sell it again. God said, why you sell your car? Hmm? It adds no sorrow. Lord, Lord, sorry that I was sorrowful. Sorry that I felt sorry because you made me rich and blessed me. Okay, let's read on. Let's, okay, stay single-minded. Don't become double-minded, okay? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Stay single-minded. Get your mind focused and I'm going to be blessed. Right, let's read on. Man, it's getting gooder and gooder as we go on. Can I give you my best example? My bestest example. Hmm? Okay, I want to take it away from the church. I want to make it personal so that you can know you can get it too. The house we stay in now, this farm right behind our church. We stay in a big house valued by the municipality before we renovated it, valued for 4.8 million. Just the house, not the ground. 25 years living next door to Alice. Okay, no. <laughs> no, 25 years. <laughs> Where did that one come from? There was such a wicked song, remember? When the guy eventually woke up, the, the girl moved. I mean, <laughs> that's like country music, man. Takes everything away from you, you know. <laughs> Bless you. Okay, 25 years, I traveled down this road. We stayed across the road. And whenever we came, we came every morning to church. I worked faithfully every day and came to church Saturdays and Sundays. When I came up here, stretched my hand out to where the trees are. Father, I thank you for that house. It's mine. The angels are going to work on it. The people's going to pay for it. I'm not going to pay for the transfer. I'm not going to pay for the contract. I'm not going to pay for the title deed. Everything's going to be paid. It's going to be my house. About four years ago, Annalise started saying, would you stop that? I said, no. She said, I'm happy where I stay. I said, you just haven't stayed there. You don't know what happiness is. <laughs> it's going to be so great to be out of the city. Hmm? And I just, thank you for that house. Every day, thank you for that. Hmm? Two years ago, the house was donated. Now, I offered the municipality over a million rand for that house 20 years ago. I said, I'll go make a bond. I'll sell my house. I'll sell my car. I'll sell my false teeth. I'll do anything, <laughs> but I need to get that house. <laughs> right? They didn't want the offer. They only paid 600,000 rand for all the ground from Klagsdorp right past here till the, you know, where Sunny Khan is to say is. Okay. They didn't want to take million rand 20 years ago. Now I got it free, Amen. donated to me. I still today, I don't know the giver. I've never met the guy who donated the house to us. I don't know what it looks like. Amen. I only know his name. I'm not going to tell it to you. Okay. Amen. Gave us the house, paid for the contract of the lawyer, paid for the transfer papers, paid for everything. I just got it. But I never, never, never changed my mind. Never. Never, 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 never. And I can tell you many stories like that. Let's read on. Hmm? Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in and boast on chariots. Some are horses, but we will trust in and we will boast on the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. We trust in God. Mm. Last one, verse 9. Oh Lord, give victory. Let the king answer us when we call. Say amen. amen. Answer us, O oh God answer us. Isn't that Elijah's prayer that still rocks my boat when I pray? Answer me, O oh God, answer me. 
on Mount Carmel with all the priests of Assyria and Baal, and you know they are 400 and 450, and they stand there crying unto their God. Nothing happens. Elijah stands up. Very short prayer. Answer me, O God. Answer me. Pam, fire from him. The people started screaming, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. Answer us, O God. Okay. What must God answer? Are you not tired of the prayer, God, if we can just have enough this month? It's not in this house. I'll preach my back to the audience. It must be for the people in Taiwan or Siberia. You know, the constant prayer, if we can just make it this month. If you can just have enough for this month. Oh God, would you just help us just to make it till payday? <laughs> Touch the button. 14. Let's call it. The payday to payday blues. You got to move, you got to move, you got to move, child. I said, move. You know what blues music is? When I was real small, my mama said, son, when your soul feel real bad, and you feel real down, the blues music will get it all out of you, my son. <laughs> this is what blues sounds like. The blues. God showed me. This is what God, literally, I even put it in my Bible. God showed me. You know like the stuff in the, when you're in the hospital, the heart thing? And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, that's the payday blues. I said, man, doesn't music look something like this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doesn't music look so, Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. This is payday. It comes with a splash. Bam, bam, bam. That night, when we were in school, my dad and my mother went to the fish and ships shop. And we all sat around the table with a big paper with fish and chips and Viennas. <laughs> See anybody from the 60s in the house? Man, fish and chips. After fish and chips, we got a milky bar. <laughs> the only time in the month we saw a milky bar. <laughs> we got the blue. Man, the next day, my mother would go to the OK Bazaars. That was the place where you used to buy your groceries in those days. It was a grocery shop, not a furniture shop. OK Bazaars was a grocery shop. So we went to OK Bazaars, but it had a little pie shop in it. It later became the Wimpy, before the Wimpy became a big thing. And then my mother would buy us on that Saturday morning a pie and a Coke. 
The only time in the month we saw a pie and a coke. Man, that whole weekend, zab a dab a dab a dab from Monday. <laughs> yeah, by the middle of the month, we hear it. Money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> Mother, can I have something for the Snoopy at the school? Do you think money's growing on my back? <laughs> Brother, it got worse. By the 29th, 30th, it hit rock bottom. Then we sang the blues. Man. It seemed my father didn't come home that night. He always worked very late. <laughs> Get some overtime. Yeah. Where's daddy, mommy? He's working to feed you. Where do you think all these hungry mouths are going to get food from? Yes, mother. So keep quiet. Tomorrow is payday. What? Fish and chips, milky bar, pie and coke. Whee! Zambity bam, milky bar, wimpy. Wow. Bam. We got the blue. We got the blue. They call it payday blue. Can I have a witness? Man, break this cursed sin. In Jesus' name. Oh Lord. If we can just have enough, just enough to make it, Lord. God, I'm not asking for much. If we can just make it, if we can just make it. God says, I am, I am, I am El Shaddai. God, what does that mean? It means, I am more than enough. Ah, then the light goes on. Oh, I don't have to pray for just enough. I need to pray for more than enough. Because if I pray for just enough, I'm not praying to the real God. Because He don't want me to have enough. He wants me to have more than enough. I'll prove it to you. Every miracle of supply in the Bible, there was always leftovers. I just read you one of the women whose debt was cancelled. And he said, and what is left over? You and your sons go live. Come on, somebody need to get it. Somebody need to get it. When Hezekiah took up that heap offering, you know, and the people brought their money, and he was on a trip. And when the king came back, he asked the high priest, what is all this money lying around? He said, hey, king, remember the heap offering? He said, but hey, these are big heaps, y'all. Is this the offering we took? He said, no, 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 no. After the people were blessed and we've done everything, we got the new organ, we got the new everything. Amen. We built our new school, the prayer towers. Up. This is the leftovers. Second Chronicles 29 to 32. Go read it. Bless you. Okay? The Bible is full. Jesus multiplied a little boy's lunch. Five loaves and two fish. Hmm? Imagine Peter. Big, hunky guy. Beer. In the front row. Jesus said, now you're 12. I'm going to break it. But you're going to give it to all these people. We're going to do what? I mean, it's two fish. Now you're going to break it in half. Maybe you're going to break it in four pieces. And you're going to give me a piece. Now I must feed 5,000 people. So yes, that's Peter. Imagine Thomas sitting next to him. <laughs> On the other side, Judas. I mean, I mean, what faith builders you can have around you. Huh? 
And here Peter gets the fish head. The two eyes are popping out. You know. <laughs> Lord. And as he takes the head and he wants to give it to the first guy, as he sticks it out, it becomes a fish. Ha! <laughs> huh? Takes his hand back, there's another head. Ah, another fish. Another head. Hey, ah, e, ah. Everybody eat the leftovers. Like what he said, 12 baskets full. Every apostle had a grocery bag for the whole month. Everybody say, El Shaddai, bless you. More than enough. I'm going to have more than enough. More than enough. Let's make the last point, 15. Listen, this is our breakthrough. We need to say it. This is my financial breakthrough day. Come on, people. We must have better clothes, better houses, better cars. Why must we envy the sinners for what they are driving and living in? Why must we? You know what we did on Sundays? My dad didn't work on Sundays. It's the only day we saw him. You know what we did? He put us in his car, and then we would drive through the place where the people lived with the nice houses. We stayed in an old little mine house. And then, and we would try and say, hmm, what is this? Near this skilled bird. <laughs> Remember? So we always thought if you want to stay there, you must have debt. We never knew that there were people that could pay that stuff cash. We learned from a small boy. Oh, look at the car. Dad, have you seen Uncle Joe's car? He owes so much on that car, it's not worth it. We didn't learn that people could buy the stuff cash. We just learned if you want something, you've got to be in big debt. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. You can pay stuff cash. Wholesales for Christians, retails for the devil. What is wholesale and what is retail? Wholesale is the cheap price. Retail is what you pay. But that thing has been sold 10 times before you actually get it in the shop. Somebody goes to the factory, he takes it to an outlet. The outlet comes and they take it to the hawkers. The hawkers go and they take it to the, and then they got reps and they go around and by the time you buy it, it's been five markups. Hmm? Did you know in Europe they're not going to make solar panels any longer? Because the Chinese sell it retail. A tenth of the price that they make it from. You didn't hear. In China, they produce solar panels. For a, they sell it actually retail. A tenth of the price that they, that they manufacture it for in Europe. Hmm. Where's Herod? Harris' dad told us the other day, cameraman. They used to import from Taiwan. So he looked in the shop, a retail shop, at lights to import to South Africa. He says, so, uh, now he looked at the prices and he said, sure, but this is cheap, man. If I can just import this to South Africa, I'm going to make bucks. And he said to the guy, so what do I pay? He said, the price on the product, less 95%. True, true. Talk to you. So, for 5% of their retail price, their retail price, price is lower than our wholesale price. And you can buy it for less 95%. Why am I telling you this stuff? There's enough money. There's enough brains out there for you to get rich. Zechariah 9, I've got to read this verse because this was my actual message. I'm going to just read it. I was shocked again last night watching a program from the pit of hell. Why did you watch it? For a specific purpose. I watched it two weeks ago. I just saw the end tale and I wanted to see this program again. 
This guy works with imagination, sublimable imagination stuff. I don't know if you saw it. So he dresses himself as a tramp, right? Then he goes to the shopping mall and he says, can I just put something in every mall, in, the, in every shop in your window somewhere that looks like money? So there's two dressed up dolls, you know, with suits and stuff like that, and the one hand is like that. So he put money in the hand. And he put like a few bills in another floor of a shopping center, you know? But the whole shopping, every year and there, there's something about money. But the gesture is that somebody's giving it. All right? So he goes, sits at the exit of the mall, looking like a beggar. Within less than an hour, 350 pounds. Okay, it's 3,500 rand. In less than an hour. He said, by just people looking around, mm, mm, and they don't even know they see money all over. So by the time they get to somebody that wants money, they just give money. And I thought, is that how the world can do it? Then if we have brains and not be seduced by some devil, don't we think we should give to the work of God without being misled or hypnotized, just knowing that this is right, so I'm going to do it. Hmm? I'm going to put my point 15 and then read Zechariah. You've got to break the cycle of payday blues. How many would like to break that cycle? You can buy fish and chips all year round. <laughs> Your stomach will not make it. Milky bars all year round. You're going to get real fat. Okay. But just to break the cycle of having enough and having a surplus for a change. Okay. This is what God showed me many years ago. I think we were still in the tent and I preached it and it has blessed me many times in my own life. God showed me a married couple. Okay? And every month, this woman goes through a monthly cycle. Most of you are grown up enough. Okay? So I'm not talking bad. If a woman is there, she comes past the age of 12, she has the problem. Bless you, ladies. Thank God I'm not a woman. God knew the men wouldn't handle it. Come on, ladies, you should have said amen now. Man, I just came up for you. What are you doing? Okay. And every month the same thing comes. And most of the ladies feel terrible. They feel sick. They get ugly. They scream at their husbands. They throw them with pots and pans. They, they break the door handles. They tear their material. Up. No, no, but I mean, it's not a good time of the month. Men, are you scared to say amen? amen. <laughs> now, ladies, don't go fight with your husbands at that. Okay, listen. It's not a good time. And every month, you don't have to ask for it. You don't have to write in a form to get it. It just comes. It just comes. Okay? But when the husband plants a seed into that woman's womb, and it's fruitful at the right time, at the right moment... Zap, the cycle is broken, and that woman doesn't get that thing for another 42 weeks. And her stomach just starts growing. Why? Because of a seed that's been planted. And the cycle has been broken, and she's not in her monthly cycles anymore. The baby is born, and as long as the mother breastfeed, the cycle doesn't return. That's why the old people had their children, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 1. I just need to get out of this one quick, okay. But God showed that to me as a young preacher. And he said, if you want to break the cycle of monthly inconvenience, not having enough. Plant a seed. He said, but then you got to keep on planting seeds. 
If you don't want the cycle back, you've got to plant another seed and another seed and another seed. And if you keep on planting seed, the cycle will never return. That's why your grandmother had 16 children. And when the smallest one was growing, she didn't get the cycle anymore because she was already 8, 11. <laughs> That's a good point. This is where you need to really give money. Okay, this is an awesome scripture. This week I was sitting, I said, God, what must I preach? I just opened this. I didn't look for it. I didn't search for it. I didn't go through a, a concordance. I just got it. Listen. Zechariah 9, you've got to underline it, you've got to make a circle around it, you've got to emphasize it. He says, 11 and 12, Amplified Bible. As for you also, because of and for the sake of the covenant or the testament of the Lord with his people, which was sealed with sprinkled covenant or testament blood. Hey, how many times do we take the communion cup? Say, this is the testament the New Testament, in my blood, right? Amen. So the Testament is sealed with Testament blood. Amen. Galatians 3, Hebrews 9. I have released and sent forth your imprisoned people out of the waterless pit. Amen. Return to the stronghold of security and prosperity. Amen. You prisoners of hope, even today... I declare that I will restore double your former prosperity to you. Remember last night's message, Isaiah 42, 22? God wants to restore and he's looking for somebody that will say restore. Because of the testament blood. Amen. I'm finished. You can close your Bibles. Amen. Because of the testament blood, you're going to come out of your prison. Amen. Which prison? Of debt. Amen. Not enough. Amen. Barely making it. Amen. Is it good? Barely making it. Come out of debt. Out of your prison. Testament blood. And you're going to have double restoration Amen. of prosperity Amen. because of the blood of Jesus. Goodness, that sounds bad. Did Jesus shed his blood so that I can prosper? Yes. Psalm 118. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Send now, God. Send now salvation. Send now prosperity. Amen. So Jesus died. He became sick so that you can be healthy. He became sin so that you can be righteous. He became poor so that you can be rich. Amen. 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 Today, God's going to Give us double restoration of prosperity. We're going to break the cycle of debt, the cycle of not having enough. We're going to break it. Right? Put some oil in my hands. Come on, hands, do it. Okay, that's good enough. Okay. Woo. It's a lot of... Hey, it smells in this house. Man. Father, I anoint this. Cloths. Okay, some cloths will have more, some ribbons will have more oil than others. Forgive us. Whew. The smell is knocking me out here, man. Wow. Ooh -wee. This is awesome stuff, man. I didn't think money can be so spiritual. Yes. Ah, can money be so spiritual, Quibus? Yes. Yes. Otherwise, it will not be so much mentioned in the Bible. Prosperity is your portion. We're going to break the cycle. We plead the blood of Jesus over your finances. Quibus, can I do that? I just read it to you. Because of the sprinkled covenant blood, 
Testament blood. God says, I'm going to prosper you. Okay? So we're going to sow seeds to break the cycles today. We're going to bring our tithes, 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 tithes to get the destroyer of our backs. Man, I feel like when I was small and I had to kneel the bread for my mother. Come, Clovis. Mama will bread in one crate. Man, knead I bread. Was there anybody else that had to knead the bread? My brothers never wanted to do it. Frick. Oh, he's in America. What's that in here, says Ian? I always had to. Nowadays, you just go to the cafe and you buy stuff. I think that's good enough. Man. Let's pray. Father, tonight, we're going to break the cycle of debt, the cycle of not having enough. We're going to apply the covenant blood of Jesus Christ, the New Testament blood, over our finances and our wallets. And we pray that as these ribbons go into our wallets and into our checkbooks, that we will come out of debt, that this will be a sign. Lord, like the cloths that were touching the skin of Paul were taken to the demon-possessed and the sick and they were healed, we pray that this will be anointing cloths for our finances, for our money, for our businesses. Oh, for breakthroughs in every area of our finances. More than enough. More than enough. In Jesus' name. Right. You're going to run to the front. Yes. You're going to say, I sow my seed to break every cycle yes. of poverty, every cycle of payday blues, every cycle of not having enough. I'm sowing a seed for more than enough. I'm sowing a seed for abundance. And I thank you, Jesus, for your blood of the New Testament that's going to bring me double prosperity of any promise anywhere in the Bible in Jesus' name. Okay? Here goes my seed. <laughs> How am I going to throw it? Yeah.